Oh, my camera's blurry. Hi guys, let me just try to adjust this a bit. Oh, hey, what's now? Great. Hello guys, welcome to Out oh, My Money. Sorry, the music date today. Um, I'm thinking of people remind me. If not, no music, even worse. Because we were so excitedly chatting about what we were going to talk about tonight that we forgot. I, I forgot all about the music part, the intro music. <laughs> okay, so let's look forward to what's going on. What's going to happen in a bit. Aha, Douglas, your first on today. Stop it! <laughs> no, Rachel King on the roof. He's not talking. <laughs> Cannot. Don't pretend. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I can. Can the viewers, viewers, can you hear Douglas now? That's so strange. That's so strange, right? <laughs> Inception. <laughs> <sighs> Chun Hao, are you gonna do the no. damn new thing also? No, I'm not gonna so do that. Huge. That's the Douglas Sequay thing, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> my camera is so near, my face is so large. <laughs> Thanks for confirming that, Douglas. Yeah, and I want to say I was praying by Douglas just now. Oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> so, so was I. So was I, but not so badly. I heard my reaction was just like, huh, huh? Oh, okay, lor. <laughs> it felt flat. Yeah, flat. Okay, so just now I was telling the viewers that about uh how we were chatting so excitedly about our topic for today that um that I forgot about the intro music. But Rachel was all reminded, but it was still late. La. So, so uh, let me start by, okay, so those of you who know me, you all will know that I am an employee, right? By day and the, the Nis Wong is my psychic. 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 So basically, but my psychic is not making him any money to say. Today, so today actually, we are going to talk about this concept of having a psychic for your employment and why is it important first we will define what is our definition of a psychic anyway you want to define or i define i define la, nobody want to define <laughs> so basically a psychic is okay like the name suggests psychic right that means it's something you're doing on the side that's generating new income may not be a law it may not be very regular but uh, yeah, it's generating some income on, on top of whatever you are doing um, as your main source of income, whether that is employment or I don't know, investing, etc. Okay, so that's our definition of the psychic. And our topic for today is the importance of having a psychic. Please flash the thank you. <laughs> okay, first we will start with our psychic. Uh, Pioneer, pioneer of side gig for the four of us. Who's that? Raise your hand. The one with the red background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine is here. Oh, oh, the one in black, is it? You mean, you mean the one pioneer, in black? Pioneer, pioneer. The one with red in the middle. Importance of having a side gig. Yeah, it's maybe, important. Maybe you eat. <laughs> you know. It's true, it's true, it's important, but we're gonna uh, explain about why. Okay, first a little bit of context, okay? So uh, uh so uh, Chun Ho used to be uh, employed and then while he was employed he started to have a psychic. That was how many years ago? Uh? That was twenty-five, more than twenty-five years ago, it's probably uh, twenty five whatever. Um <laughs> no. twenty seven years ago, wow. I was not looking for that, but now my 20 okay, years wait, ago, Let me just start. Okay, that was yeah. in 1995. Wow. In the 19, okay. some, some people on the show may not have, not born yeah, yet. Not born yet. Or maybe they're just toddler or just in primary school. But in 1995, if you think the um if you think prices are high now, 
in the early 90s in Singapore, actually, uh, the HD prices are actually quite steep. And the car prices also very high. And COE at one point was actually $100. Some of you may not know that, but COE actually was being traded like crazy. And it actually hit $100,000 for a few months. And so now even COE at $30,000, $40,000 is actually nothing. So buying a car was like totally out. And you have to remember starting pay or even the engine at that time is not like what most people get a starting pay now. Nowadays, I think you get for engine, I don't know. 3,500 to 4,000 at the time it's like 2,000 to 2,500 2,500 is on the top end but mostly okay about 2,000 so it's on low it, it, it's around there you don't, you don't get much so at the time when you're looking at the things that you need to you know the houses you need to buy and the cars you need to own and all those stuff you're like there's no way I'm probably not going to have any of these things until a long long time later so it then occurred to me that having an employment, getting income from just being an employee is not enough. And if you plan to retire, and at the time I, I, I didn't plan to retire at 60 something, I think that's too late already. I would have retired at 40. Because I wouldn't have energy, I wouldn't have enough strength, energy to do what I want to do, go traveling. Traveling with a lot of energy. It's more like just sit on some expensive plane, go to some expensive hotel, I want to travel, see the world, travel and move around and other things, track. So that needs energy. So I'm not going to do that. 60 so it needs to be earlier. And in order to do that, I need to supplement my expenses so that most of my salary goes into a saving or something that will grow in the investment. So what I did was I started um I don't know how many of you know that at the time. Uh, last time in that in those times, every Sunday at Clarky, there's a flea market. And so my friends and I actually set up a store at the flea market and we started selling um, some merchandises. And we actually sold collectible swap watches as well as uh, toys, action figures specifically. And we actually look out for stuff that um uh, those so people were paid do dollars for it so most of the time we actually made about 100 percent margin so some actual figures like cost about 12 dollars whatever that we can sell about 20 to 30 dollars so so that's the range that's what we make so on a monthly basis it's not so bad most of us can bring about 500 dollars extra per month <clears throat> And that's on top of our regular salary income. So five dollar a month on top of that, five dollars is about twenty percent of it. And when when you just starting off, you actually don't spend a lot. This thing with parents, so you don't spend a lot. You can actually spend most of your expenses is on the five hundred dollar. You save the bulk of the salary. That's I mean I save the bulk of the salary. Then I look for another place to put my money so that it will go. So. The key to having a side gig is to supplement to your expenses so that you can pick up most of your, of your income to save. And the, the other benefit of having a side gig is that you have another income. So you're not relying on the main source of income and then you don't have to subject yourself to the power of authority and employment you know, that is pulling you, hanging you by the neck. So sometimes you can say no to things and you don't have to worry. Okay, that's that's the other benefit that I have. So you can actually tell the boss that no, I don't agree. No, I'm not gonna do that. So what you kick me off? <laughs> I'm not telling the rest to do it, but you have something at the side, you have that power. If you don't have something at the side, you give the whole power to your only source of income. That's very scary. To me, that's scary. How can you give the power to one group? I do have a question for you though. Do you feel that you are a special breed in you know earning that side gig of five hundred dollars and putting it aside as well? I think if I'm at that age and had that money, I might have spent it. Yeah, you probably buy it from some some you know, bag, bag. <laughs> right? Maybe. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. That's such judgment. Judges, <laughs> yeah. No, she said it. What? She spent it or something. 
Yeah, I probably would have spent it now because I was young and ignorant and young. <laughs> Ish, young ish, <laughs> younger. Well, then again, I had a plan to retire at 40. So if I spent it, I would have that money. So that was a plan. And and it was a plan to retire at 40 so that I can get out and take some money so I can do to travel around the world to see the world in when I'm still healthy and in good health and all those things. Because I don't want to do that when I'm 60 and then suddenly they're going to diagnose me and say that, oh, sorry, you have this, 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 your knee a problem, your heart a problem, you cannot do this, you have cholesterol, you cannot do that. And then you're grounded and it's like, shit. It's so, so funny. Uh, <laughs> no, it's so, it's so funny. It's so funny how young people think. What do you mean? That, that at, <laughs> so, so we are close to that age that you know just said that we are we potentially can be diagnosed with something that makes us uh, uh, less, uh, mobile. less mobile. So, wait, so wait, I'm just wait. when you say we is you and Chun Ho, right? Yeah. Me and Chun Ho. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm just noticing that it's funny. That, that he had that thought when he was at that young age. <laughs> okay, that that uh, age 60 is 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 old, you know. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and 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 then yet today we fault we fault the younger people when they think that 50 or 60 is old. It's all relative. So we were so we were that age and we also had that same thought. <laughs> Okay, any, any <laughs> because they're looking at, at the time I was looking at people that is 60 and they have like okay at a time in One the night <laughs> no and then, okay it's different nowadays people in the 50s and 60s actually are not that they are more active they are more active but when in the 90s when you look at the people that are in the 60s they're actually le less active because they grew up from a generation that was different they, they were actually struggling, especially in Singapore. We were a developing nation at the time and people were just making end, ends meet at the time. So they did have the luxury that I, we had when we were growing up to have, to have exercise yeah. and stuff. And, and now generations are even, even having it more. So I, I know that those people that in the 60s at the time, a lot of them are really hunchback. They're working with a lot of medical issues already in their 60s. And I was looking at them, that was my reference. I am not going to grow up to 60 and having those issues and then want to travel the world. But I it's mean, true you... because they pushed their body very, very hard when they were younger. Because at that time, it was just exchanging time for money. Time for money. Right? Right. Yeah, so some of them, they will work 20 hours a day, 18 hours a day, just to just to make ends meet. Like what you say. So they drove their body very, very hard. until, And it's not exercise, right? You just lack of yeah. sleep, and, you know, and you usually they will go for the cheapest food, which is yeah. usually not very nutritional. I mean, but, food, but not exactly. Having right. said that, there are my counter, get okay, there are counterparts, my peers, uh, who are still in employment, uh, who have I, aged a lot. They, they are not looking after their body. Okay. It's also it's also a uh, okay. So it's it's also a mindset, right? Okay. Talking about mindset, there's something else I wanted to ask you. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of other um, platforms out there who are talking about um, saving when you're young. And I think the younger generation now, actually, they are a lot more exposed to this kind of financial topics and uh, financial talk, whether it's on social media. For example, there's the work salary man, right? That one is quite popular. And some of the things they say, so if, so they did a breakdown. If you can save, like what you said, a thousand a month, um, especially when you're staying with your parents, you're not paying for your utilities, etc., etc. Et no children, no spouse, no nothing. It's just yourself. It's more than enough. But a lot of people um, find it very difficult because they would rather, because when you save out that thousand dollars, it would mean you have to give up many other things. Correct? So, for example, you cannot go out with friends, or maybe you go out, you can yeah. only go to certain, certain places. There is always that consideration. You can. I was, you can. You can. I was going out with friends. I'm not like avoiding friends, but the things that I avoided, what I avoided, okay, I would say this, but what I avoided was taking taxi. I never took taxi. 
I will always take a bus. But or, if your friends go to like expensive restaurants or expensive for your age uh, or your uh, earnings, I will only go time. once in a while. I will only go once in a while with them. Just yeah, so you still need to give up some time. Most of the time, most of the time, I will hang out with friends who think similar to me that uh, we need to save up. So if I if I have friends who keep going out with them, I'm not gonna hang up most of the time with them. They are not going to get there because maybe they have the finances I don't have and I can't hang out with them. We are different world and I acknowledge that. Okay. So, so it's about so it's about staying away from temptation also, right? And looking because there's also a lot of stuff that is connected to to the going out friends part that is the looking cool to see and be seen. So there are people who are not financially able Hmm. who probably were in the same income class as you mm -hmm. um, who, who had different spending patterns. This one, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to avoid making it right or wrong, good or bad, but simply had different spending patterns because of different desired levels mm -hmm. as well as lifestyle mm -hmm. is. Okay, and then, and, then, and then there are consequences. Yeah, there are consequences either yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. So you have, if you are able to live with the consequence and you don't regret the consequence and you have given thought to it, it's okay. And I'm okay not to live that kind of lifestyle so that I can have plan, have something planned for the future. At a time, I already have this thing in my mind, oh, while I need to live today, I need to plan for tomorrow because while we don't know whether we'll live another day, because anything can happen, right? Like Rachel said, you can walk across the road and then somebody can hit you and all that. Accident. Yes. So, yes, I mean, that you need to live today. You cannot like, don't live today as if like today that is not, you cannot live the day as if the day doesn't mean anything. You need to live today. But at the same time, you don't know, but you can always survive tomorrow. You can always have another day to survive. So you always need to plan for tomorrow. So while you live today, you also need to plan for tomorrow. But you, and then there are people who go the other way. They only live today and forget about tomorrow. And there are people who plan excessively for tomorrow and forget about living today, which I've seen both sides. And I thought about it as that there's no right or wrong is what the person wants. And I, I want to make sure that I cover both sides. Yeah, so I always believe that at the end of the day, it's about balance, about, about living according to what's important to each of us, each of or me, according to the individual, and then creating that balance for themselves. Mm, Denise is nodding her head. I am nodding my head, but at the same time, I'm just wondering, because I think for me, the biggest issue is always about uh, I love going out with my friends, uh, whether it's people who go out uh, expensive places or non-expensive places. Um, so that was a huge, it was, that was where most of my money went when I was a lot younger. Clubbing and all that, just just going out. And then, um, yeah, so, so, so it's interesting because as we talk now, I'm also realizing, like, I look back, it's interesting. I know logically that if I do certain things now, it can build up to a better future, etc., etc. Et but I don't know why, maybe because the future for me, like for many other people, is not as present, not as scary, not as in my face as the current situation. You know what I mean? So then, so then, instead of keeping my eyes on the future, what is important in the future, it became like 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 this the, the present situation just swept me away. Hi Winnie. Hi Winnie. Winnie. Yes. So is it like the future is so far away that you can't see it? For me, yeah. for me, yeah, it's, it's, it took me a very long time to realize that like okay like Jun Ho, Jun Ho is probably has something that helps to keep me anchored towards the future. Like, okay, the future is important. I need to do this, get it done, I don't care. Just get it done, you know, that kind of thing. I I, I don't feel that urgency because it's the future. It depends you know on, I mean? uh, it also depends on how far you feel to see the future in. Because I, my, my future was very near. My future is tomorrow. <laughs> my future, when I say near, it was 15 years later, which is- Yeah, correct, you see. And, it, and it's relative, it's relative, and I saw yeah. features. Forty is not 
far because at 40, I'm still young and healthy. I said, okay, I'll save up, save up for that. I need to plan, save up for that and get out. So that's why I had a, I had a side gig and I think people need to consider How old were you when you had a side gig? You said uh, 25. 25. Yeah, that was 25 years old. Usually people wouldn't think about having a side gig. Or yeah, when I was 25, I was in that. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 as in, not seriously, maybe you will just do something on the side because you're enjoying but you, you are not doing it because you are planning for what's coming up when you are 50 years old or 60 years old. I am planning because I was looking at, I started working and I was looking at the houses. It was sky high. Probably yes, I understand high. that part, correct. But I think a lot of people logically understand it also. But then how... Do you stop yourself from being tempted? You know what I'm trying to say? You know, you know what, what people will, I, I know a lot of people will say, okay, private property is so expensive and um, uh, HDB prices is out of range as well. So the best way to get a HDB is to get married. It, it's so conditional. And I don't want to be conditional to get a property. It's, it's, I, I thought, felt that if I want to get a property, in order to get a property, then I must get married. That is so conditional, which means I am locking myself into a condition to do something, which means somebody has a handle on me, which I don't like. I need to make a decision independently out of a handle. So that was your driving force, right? That was my driving force. I said, okay, I need to have extra money. I have to have something else so that I can eventually own the property, not conditional that I have to RM first. I need to own the property because I am capable of funding it. So you're very clear. You're very clear in your direction and clear. you work towards it. Yes, because I don't want to be slave to the house. I want my house to be my sanctuary and I don't have to keep thinking, oh no, I'm gonna lose my house if I don't have a job. Oh no, if I don't have if I don't get married, I don't have a house. This shouldn't be the case. I shouldn't be worrying about a roof over my head because of a job. Because of, of ha having getting married, uh, these these conditions are a bit okay. Something I can grapple with. So I need I want to be up of it. I need to be able to do it without all these conditions, independently out of it. I want that choice. So mm. so I that was my driving force. So when you were doing your side gig, that was your driving force. Even though I'm sure you were very tired. Because you said it you, you did your work. I you, it was every Sunday going down there, packing all the things, and then packing and bringing it back, and then dealing with customers. I tell you, Dean, because it's not nice. Okay. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> there are some customers that are not nice. Yeah, okay, okay. Was, was that your passion, that, that, that those collectibles that you were selling, or was it uh, you were doing it because of the money? I was also collecting swatch watches at the time because I I was at the time was looking at things that I can increase value in and I was looking at okay, no Rolexes is a little bit too expensive out of my league. Then I, I, I look at all the other things and hey, swatch so watches, there's a market for it. And then depending on what it is, value can increase. And some of them has a market. Uh, and it's not very expensive to own one piece. It was like 60 over dollars for one. And actually, if it's rare enough, the prices can jump, can double, sometimes triple. So it's not about 60 over dollars increase, but hey, it's 100% gain. I'm looking at the percentage. If I sell enough of it, that's enough 100% regardless. Regardless. And then I've got friends who own toys and have action figures. And they, at the time, they were having Star Wars, Spawns, and Batman, and other stuff. And, and and that was my friend's hobby. So, and then we figured out that there's a market for it. So we combined and said, okay, our store will sell so much as, as well as... Okay. I see. So, so actually, I just realized, actually, I just realized amongst the four of us, I think only Chuno has a side gig. <laughs> right? Has a profitable side gig. <laughs> and... <laughs> Of course, of course, it, 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 it's to, to you guys who are inter not interested in what I did, you'll find it tiring because after office hour, the spare time is I have to hunt where are the places to buy the stuff. No, you have to hunt. Actually, I went down, I was like going 
going down to places like Peninsula Plaza, going to Far East Plaza, going to places, obscure little watch shops to look for those rare stuff. And some of them don't online, know. Online, so, so it no, no, so, don't, don't have online. Yeah, no, online, online, okay, people, huh? you go down. Oh, go down physically and look for it. Yeah. For it. I, I remember at the time I was looking at, um, I, I can't remember, yeah, some, just to identify where the, the uh, boutique watch stores are and then where, what they sell and then go and browse around and look around, take some time in the evening, over the weekend, browse around, and then finally you identify and you know some few already, then you go there regularly to see whether they have rare stuff. Sometimes they have rare stuff they don't even know. Then you buy it. And after that, you sell it. Okay, okay. it takes time. Okay, Denise brought up online. What killed that business was online. eBay came on and the whole thing died because eBay make it easy for people to buy things. It's accessible to anything already. So the margin shrunk, shrunk to 10, 20%. It's in get out of the business. Uh, for the amount of work that you're putting in. Yeah. Then I'm curious, do you move on to something else after that? Oh yeah, so I have saved up this. Okay, I still have a lot of action figures, oh. watches, but after that, I moved on. I was looking at that. I said, okay, I have all this money. I have some money saved up already. What do I do? And then I went into the stock market. That was about the time when the Asian financial crisis came, and it was a good time. I was like, oh, all the all the stock prices all the blue chips so low. Let's go in. I don't really know about it, but let's, just let's go in and learn about it. So I went in. I don't really know. I didn't study from anybody. I just went in because and I bought the blue chips first. And then I paid tuition fee from there. And it's like, if you want to learn mahjong, you want to learn poker, you want to play blackjack, you need to go in and get and learn it. The only way to learn something is to participate into the market. You don't go and learn mahjong like looking and watching and watching. You watch forever. If I leave you, do it. you need the experience of it. So I went in. So that was my other side. So I was actually not trading, but investing. I was investing and studying and learning. So okay. I learned them. And then subsequently, so okay, no. this is my So then subsequently later, when the property market came, um, as a downturn in the property market, and I saw an opportunity, I went in as well. I don't know anything about property. I didn't learn from anybody. The only thing I learned about property market was I bought my first HDB. And at the time, I also know Douglas. And Douglas bought his first home loan. Douglas became your side gig. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's not my side gig. Um, no, not his side gig. So we oh. learned about property. We went in. So we went in knowing a little bit based on how we thought about this and we, we know some of the things that need to be done and then we went in and we went yeah, in and we, we had the same side gig okay so we were not each other's side, gig. We were we part part the same side. side gig so he sought from having an action figures partner to an investing partner yeah okay so so, so, we so that's why this, you were saying so we invested in properties and we became landlords and landlords it's, it's a, a full-time full job. <laughs> I will always call it a full-time job because it is a side gig, okay? Landlord is a side gig. People keep saying that, oh, you be a landlord, you take rent, it's a passive income. Not just sex, don't think it's ever, ever a passive income, okay? It is another thing that you do on the side because you need to handle the tenants. You need to do up the property. You need to go and renovate, and then you're going to talk to the agent, and then you're going to do this, and then when things happen, you need to be with the tenants. So this was on top of your day job, right? Yes, on my day job and my prop, uh, and my stock investing. Okay. And this is also the reason. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, this is also the reason. Uh, yes, yeah, you were saying, hey, you want to say faster say. <laughs> oh, oh, I was saying that. So I was doing stock investing. Being a landlord, okay, but at the same time look for other properties. So I was and still having my my employment. Was so it was tiring? Not, it was depends. But at times I still have time to go party. You don't need sleep, is it? Because I'm just trying to figure out what made you 
continue even though it's tiring they will return is it or what you retire for tea lah no lah it's also oh, that was still, so so your driving force was still seeing in the future yes right okay so so that that is chungho's driving force and that was yeah, what driving force is, is to be able to actually not Diet. worry about my boss telling me because my bosses will sometimes do make good i would tell them no it's the end of the day already i'm doing my stuff if there's no emergency don't come and tell me there's something emergency okay i'm uh, actually uh, if everything yeah, yeah. Is, yeah <laughs> if everything is urgent then nothing is urgent if everything is urgent, nothing is urgent okay. i'm going to i'm going to create a little bit of context and that context is if 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 someone wants to retire at a point in time in their life then there is a certain level of it, income that is required to sustain mm. that level mm. that quality of life whatever the quality of life and there is a not there is a number to that <clears throat> so so if let's say that number is a hundred thousand dollars a year to travel to live without having to worry it means that you need to have a million dollars parked away somewhere okay just for the sake of simplicity as an example okay you need to have a million dollars. If you have a million dollars parked away in, a, in an investment instrument that generates 10% per year consist, consistently, and that's the key consistently, uh, generates $10,000, uh, 10% a year, then you get $100,000 of income a year on the million dollars. Okay, so that is an end point. Okay, so, I, so I'm just using, okay, so, so his end point was retire at 40 to have something that generates him that. And if you think about it, okay, so then, so you need to have a million dollars, okay, unless you strike auto or somebody, you have a sugar something somewhere and that gives, that can, that gives you <laughs> huge lump of and that's rare. Um, most people will need to build up that million dollars. So we did some math, Chunho did some math, okay, we, we did our different type of math. <laughs> If you save a thousand dollars a month, okay, you save a thousand dollars a month. First year, second year, save two thousand dollars a month. Third year, three thousand dollars a month. Fourth year, four up to five thousand dollars a month. And you park it away in an inv investment instrument that, that gives you about ten percent, okay, ten percent a year. It will take twelve to fifteen years. Twelve to fifteen years to build up a million dollars. Okay, that's 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 how it, that's that's the math. That's how it works. Okay, so so there are a few conditions in this, and the conditions in in this are there is then you must have some that person must have enough discipline, okay, to save a thousand dollars a month first year, two thousand dollars a month second year, three thousand dollars a month, and and most people income don't increase by a thousand dollars a month in a year. Okay, but that's the condition. Okay, if you want to have a million dollars within 15 years, that's what you need to do. Okay, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Second condition is 10% a year. 10%, that instrument must consistently give 10% a year, that investment. Okay, and with, even with these two conditions, discipline enough to put aside the money, having an instrument that generates, and it's not bank, it's not fixed D even, uh, hello, 10% a year, the lag, the time, the duration is 12, 12 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So for someone to want to retire at age 40, you need to start at age 25. That's how it works. Okay, yeah. And that's saving. Okay. So if you, if you cannot save, you cannot do that, if you cannot do that, your income cannot uh, does not allow you to do that, then the consequence is at age 40, in 15 years, you will not have a million dollars. And that's the reason you need a side gig. Because you want to retire early enough yes. to be mobile. At that time, as Douglas has said it, I actually did the math already first year in, in after working. I did the math. And my requirement to retirement is I might, I need to have two million dollars. Two million, not one million. So so because uh, going by our own level of living yeah, yeah. Whatever your level. Yeah. I think included the included the house that I stay in included the asset included the assets which we include the house that I stay in my condition mm -hmm. was two million dollars including the assets which is the house I stay in. at the moment now that I know more I think that is a it's a bad way of doing it I cannot include my house 
But at the time when 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 I just started, I included my house. I said two million. Yeah, 25, 25 don't know anything yet. Yeah, <laughs> two million including my house. So then I plan it out. I say that at forty, based on my income increases on a yearly basis, I make an assumption that 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 based on how much I'm going to spend that that I'm not going to get there in forty if I don't do something else. Yes. I need to do something else. Just based on employment, I'm not going to get there. And even though I scrunch and eat bread every day, it's not going to get me there. So, so people. So, so the thing, the thing is. So these are the facts. So these are the facts of how to make it happen. If you want to, if someone wants to retire at age, whatever, whatever age it is. Okay. So whatever age it is, the the fact is that it, it takes it takes time to accumulate that and and, and to build that up. Okay, and the, the funny thing is there are a lot of people who are complaining about their jobs all the time. Okay, they're complaining about their jobs all the time. They're not happy in their jobs. Okay, they, they're, they're, dis, they're distressed. Okay, they're tired. They're, they're whatever it is. They're not happy at their jobs. Okay, but yet they're not, they're not taking secondary steps, steps. Okay, to protect, okay, to, to, to counter, to, to, to handle the getting out of the job part. Okay, so, so year after year, okay, they continue to bitch about and complain about how bad the situation is, but yet there isn't a, 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 a back door that's being created, a, a, a contingency plan that's in place to get them out of that misery. <laughs> and, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because the more they complain and don't do anything about it, the more they actually prolong their misery because they can't get out. Yeah. Actually, what, what is the common phenomena, especially in from the industry that I came from, is people just jump from one for higher shithole to another shithole to you know. <laughs> I hope you guys don't, those are watching don't know where I came from. So from one hole to another hole to another Most jobs are like that. Unless it's something that you are truly passionate about. It's it's funny how Rachel said shithole to another shithole is like all our shitholes. No, it is what we say. As if yeah, you know, so what show to not show. But at least you are better paid now. You know, better paid you should know. Better paid you should know. It's actually not. Holy shit, but yeah. higher pay. Why not, right? Yeah, but the, thing is, the thing is that the, the, the benefit of having a side gig or having something, an investment on the side that have a supplemental uh, income that have, it actually gives you a lot of leverage. Yeah, get out of the shit hole. Why you don't get out of the shit hole? <laughs> It, no, having that give a lot of leverage. Like I, I find that it gave me a lot of leverage because I can actually go and talk to my boss and tell my boss off and tell him that look, this doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna do well, this. Yeah. I know I, what you mean by leverage. I, I, no I, I, I can tell my boss off I'm not gonna do this because it doesn't make sense. Da, 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 da. I'm not gonna worry about how he's gonna appraise me because I'm not worried about it. I know, I know, I understand what you mean. So basically, you are not held prisoner la, by your yeah. salary. I'm not held prisoner by my career. I'm not thinking of the career, but unfortunately, you know what? I just learned, and then I learned that bosses actually like people like this. Some bosses. I get most of my bosses I encounter like people like this. So yeah, I you happen to be in a place, you happen to be in a place where most, many bosses like that and it's okay it's a culture right yeah, yeah it's a culture so if you're in the same company people are usually like that then you will have people at the management level and above who are like that because they will push people like that upwards man. that's how yeah. but that's how company grow actually it depends. Uh, there are many others who are not like that yeah but i realize why some companies prefer people like this is because if you're publicly listed company and you work for a big company you need to be able to stand up and defend for the company and if you can defend yourself with your bosses, they know that they can push you up next time to defend for the shareholders. Okay, so the thing is, that doesn't happen to be the profile yeah. of most people. Of most companies, not like yeah. that. Yeah. And okay, so 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 that is why okay, so that is why it's important for children. But I think uh, for a lot of us, it's also important. But okay, this one was something that I brought up. A lot, a lot earlier. If you realize, right? I was, I was asking Chunho a lot about his driving boss, etc. Because I think a lot of people who we, whom I talk to, they also know, they also know that 
um, if they want to not be shackled by their jobs and their salary for the rest of their lives, they have to have a side gig. And then that's when you slowly build up a side gig to the point where you can just quit your job, right? I mean, that was what you were doing. So, But then how do you spare the energy, that time, not time, uh, that I think energy and mental capacity would be most important for for that side gig, uh, especially for those with kids. Then it's it's it, it's it's even more difficult, I would say, because oh, the kids become the side gig. <laughs> you <laughs> sell the like kids right on the black market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Then he's he can have more kids and keep selling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That is okay for our dear viewers. That is that this does not uh, represent the views of our family. You just true those solely <laughs> personal views. No, I told Delphic don't do that already. <laughs> Afi is the one that brought it up. Anyway, <sighs> before they have kids, you need to start early to, to, to start it first. Then, as it you know, come to a certain start level, having kids. Start, yeah, you know, start, start having kids. You need early. to start I start starting them early. <laughs> You need to start. No, you need to start your side gigs before you start having kids. Oh, because you have kids, have kids early. You need to start it early. Seriously, you need to start it early before having kids, so that yeah, your side kid can grow already. Then you can go into some form of what do you call it, cruising mode. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with everything, and then that's why you don't have energy. But the other thing, more importantly, to get the energy is to maintain your body. It's new, you need to exercise, build up energy, and other things. You need wow, that. Wow, very busy, eh? Can you imagine those people who have no energy, no time to do psychic, still have to find time to and to exercise? Okay, so when mental capacity-wise, uh, you have to wake up early, go to work, right? Okay, now no more. Like, let's just say work from home. Uh, you work from home, so that's eight hours. And then, uh, then after that, after you come back, you have to think about what to cook for dinner, right? And then after you need to work out. And then after that, you need to do your sake. Or so yeah. no, the thing, the thing, the thing I want to say also is that <laughs> when 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 Kunho and I were younger, <laughs> <laughs> I know we were younger at the start of our careers. Okay, the the way we do side gigs, um, and how the world is today is very different. Okay, because because when at twenty five, when we were twenty five, okay, Chuno is older than me. Okay, when we were twenty five, <laughs> when we were twenty five, the world, the world, we didn't have the internet yet. Okay, and as Chuno described earlier, okay, the it, it took a tremendous amount of effort to 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 do a side gig. Yeah, I mean, or, or even whatever else it is, it it takes it took a tremendous amount of time, effort, and energy to do. A side gig and side gigs are not new okay we call them side gigs today but our parents called called it a, the second job or the part-time job or the, the supplementary income okay and 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 so it's, it's not a new thing it is it is really about building up enough resources to for the future okay because we're not going to work forever okay at some at some point in time we're going to decide to, to to spend our lives doing something else that we enjoy more. Okay, so so that's that's the idea most people have. It's just that which point in our life. Okay, and so a lot of us are conditioned that we will retire at 65, and 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 then that be, that becomes the standard to follow. Okay, so someone like Chun Ho breaks the rules and says that no, I'm not going to retire at 65, I'm going to do it at 40 because I want to have enough energy to enjoy the things I want to enjoy. So, so the, the thing is, is really thinking about it differently and, and, and being really very realistic about what it is. Okay, today it's a lot easier to do side gigs, but today the world is also different because things are a lot more expensive. The property is a lot more expensive compared to the, the level of income, even though income has increased, but everything else has, the cost of living has gone up. Not okay, the same rate la. Yeah, not the same rate, but at the same time, we also have access to a lot of resources. Mm. Okay, but the thing is, a lot of people are not using those resources or planning ahead. And then and then that retirement just gets delayed, 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 delayed. Or even, and, but the thing is, 
we cannot avoid that point. And for a lot of people, if, you, if they're not doing, they keep delaying. Procrastination is a thief of time. Okay, and if and if and earlier I, I I gave the math. Okay, it takes fifteen years to build up to build up. If you are just using purely money, it takes fifteen years to build up a million dollars. And today, a million dollars is not a lot of money at all. Okay, so if we don't start for for people who don't start, it just means that the 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 point of independence is going to be delayed. That's all, and mm -hmm. that's the. Okay, so so Denise, you were saying earlier. Okay, what so so how do you stay focused in? In, in all that okay that the the, the 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 two things okay at which point at which point in your life okay do you really want to have the freedom to do whatever you want to do and how long do you want to wait that's that's all okay and 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 i guess that 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 is the reminder for that that is that is how it works okay and and, and then you could, and that and then i guess for people they need to see how much that matters or how, how much longer they want to stay in shit holes <laughs> to quote Rachel. Yeah, yeah. And, and how how do uh, okay so okay do you want to go to something is it yeah i'm just saying so mm -hmm. for me for the years that i was actually an employee i mm -hmm. never had monday blues so i never understood the concept of monday blues because a lot of people mondays they will just drag their feet going to work i don't Okay, Monday, let's go to the office because it is just doing something. It is not as if like, for me, it is just because I have something on the side that is, I don't have to worry about the job. I don't have that constant fear of losing my job, losing how I'm being seen in the company, my, how, how I'm being ranked in the company, how I'm doing it. I don't have that fear. I don't have to hold actually i think the blues part um yeah. comes from comes from not the fear of you know whatever but knows. also there are a lot of people who are doing stuff that they actually don't really like maybe it's not like they detest it but just not don't really like it's just something to do and the, maybe the atmosphere or the environment at the company yeah. isn't that great. So you just need to find a better shit home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a viewer. Um, yeah. She's very cute. Celeste Chua. Hi, Celeste. She said she started having kids early, but not my, but not her side gigs. How? Oh, <laughs> As a joke, you can start selling your kids early. Sell also. the kids and then sell the kids. Sell the kids to, get, to raise capital for your side gigs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. So I assume no, when you see you started no. having kids early. Hmm? Don't listen to this. What what the sell kids? Yeah, it's not true. Okay, the sell kids are just a joke. Okay, be fun, please, huh? Um, and then, okay, so I was thinking, and then and then Winnie replied, uh. That she's still young should start now i think um celeste the good thing about having kids early also in a way is that you kind of get it out the way not get it out the way but i would assume now they are a little bit older um so a bit more manageable than let's say when they are i'm not saying teenagers are manageable. i have no idea what kids are age are uh what 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 age your kids are but i assume that they are a little bit older now so you it's a bit easier to manage in terms of timing and energy. You don't have to run around after them like toddlers, etc. Then it's good also because you think about it. Then now it's a good time to start because you have more energy than you have more time, lah, basically, than when you were very young and you're running around after them or having to wake up every two hours to feed them and that kind of things. Yeah, so now it's a good time to start. Integrate integrate the kids into the side gate. No, not yeah. me, and I don't mean I don't mean sell the kids. <laughs> Integrate the kids into the side yeah. gate. Yeah, part of the side gate. There's, there, there are so many ways to do that. Oh. And you know, there's, there's, some, there's some kids who are side. There are some kids who hmm, side gigs. Who side? No, it's not. It's not the side gig because they, they don't have a game. No, it's still because they're main thing is studying. Yeah, the main thing is studying. Yeah, so so they are still because they're studying on the side that's making okay. them money. So, so, so they they there are kids who make more money than the parents do. Okay, yeah, so so Celeste, if your kids are like teenage and you know teenagers now they're very into social media, influencing people. I don't know, I don't know if all these influencers, I don't know who they're influencing each other probably, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, if there's there's a lot of resources and, and money uh out, out there to be made. So if let's say your your kids are at that age where they are very social media savvy, 
um, etc. You you can ask them for ideas. They probably have a lot of ideas. May not be what we are used to, but yeah, may just be a good side gig, and then it gives you a chance to work together. Actually, on that point that Denise just made, mm. that the kids, the younger, the younger people, the Gen Zs lah, the Gen Zs, Zs. and then the <laughs> Zs, the Zoomers, the Zs. Zoomers, yes. and then the late, the late, the late millennials. The pe- okay, basically people who are in their twenty two, twenty in their twenties now. They they are the fi- they are they are doing they are doing what's current. Mm, early twenties. So we we are no longer current. Okay, uh, okay, maybe. We are now uh, past ninety five. It's not perfect ten. So we okay. So <laughs> so we need we the the older generation. Okay, the gen the gen Xs whom whom we are. And then the Gen Y ones actually should take the cue from the Zoomers and the Y twos, because that's where the world is today. Okay, and 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 we know when we were younger, and then our parents look at us and then and then criticize the things that we do, and 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 we we say that they don't they don't get us. the The same thing is happen happening for a lot of people. Out there right now, okay, people, the Gen Xers who are looking at the younger generation and say, "How come? How come they are like that?" Actually, they are doing what what is happening in the world today. What is current? And, yeah, what's current, and we actually need to learn. Yeah, we are that. lagging. Yeah. So I, I just want to add. I mean, I agree with all of them, and I just want to add and, and I agree with what Winnie is saying to there as well. Every tree takes time to bear fruit. I mean, the best time to grow a tree is now. It's 20 years yeah. ago. No, the don't say that you're demoralizing <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. Now. Now is the next best time. If you haven't... Now, if you missed the 20 years ago, the next best time is now. It's never too late. Yeah, okay, but if you procrastinate... But you just have to wait 20 years. Now. Yeah, but if you yeah. procrastinate, there will be another 20 years have passed already. So don't wait. Uh, just, just do something, start something. With the internet, as Douglas has mentioned, there are plenty of opportunities. I mean... Now that I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm in my fifties, but now that I am, have the internet, you know, doing research and all those things is so much easier. Finding stuff is so much easier. I can find things and research for stuff to, on things on which areas to invest in, what companies, on businesses that I want to put my money in. It's so much easier compared to last time. The power yeah. of the internet is there. I mean, now even in your hand, videos of it. There's so much you can do. The internet yeah. actually quite a lot. So a lot at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, I believe that those who really want to do it will find a way to do it. The rest will just like. Mm, yeah. Will just like. And then, yeah. and then by the time you start sowing your seeds, if you like any more, by the time you start sowing your seeds, by the time you bear fruit, Okay la, good enough for maybe the next gen no? but maybe we are gone already. <laughs> anyway, Celeste is in her twenties. She's younger than all of us. Damn it, Celeste, start now. No wait, Liao. <laughs> Ma yeah, so the, so we, can't, we can't turn back the clock. So that's the thing. So we don't start. Okay, we can't turn back the clock and say, okay, I wish we cannot turn back the clock twenty years and say, okay, I'm gonna plant the tree now so that I, so it's, it's so that's mm-hmm. the fact. Mm. So just start now. Just start now. Chiba. Just, just start try now. Ba. Yeah, just try. Whatever, just try whatever it is. Plant the seed. Can I just yeah. add one more thing? Another Hi, benefit. Yes, really. <laughs> Another benefit yes. of side gig. It is it, not just that you have leverage on your money and all those things that can help you supplement your I wouldn't call it you supplement your expenses and then you can save um. the money. From your income, supplement your income. People like to say supplement your income. I, I, I rather use your side gig is supposed to pay for all your expenses so that you can take almost of your income from your day job or whatever job, uh, main job, and then put into investment to, to grow. At the same time, when your side gig you no know, matures and can cruise along already, and finally you can tell your boss bye bye. You do you have something to do when you retire from your full time job. There's something going on for you. There are people that I know who retire and then they don't know what to do. And then they just either have their mind and rock their mind or they just, I don't know, they just hang around, don't know what to do. So the side gig that you build up 
has benefits that keep you going, keep give you something to live for in life. The thing I want to add to what Chun Ho just said is if you start when you retire, not too late, but it's the damn big mountain to climb. Okay, to imagine to, to imagine that at, at the age of retirement that you have to start something new. To me, that's a huge mountain to climb. Okay, because it takes it actually takes time to nurture to get to a steady mode. So start now. Bottom line is start now. Start now. Some people may think oh, I'm going to build like two, three million dollars so that I can retire comfortably, but you can try having two, three million and retire comfortably, but then you still need to do something with your life. You're going to live longer. You may live until 90 plus and then you're 30 over yeah. years. Yeah. At the time, maybe 100 plus is the norm already. Yeah. Then you need to think yeah. about what you're going to do. Mm. And if you don't do yeah. something up, you'll be like, huh? Then you start calling your kids, huh? I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing now? I tell you, you'll be yeah, boring. So yes, yes, Celeste, you're right. When young is Bukitima Hill, when old is more Everest. Now you're 20, so not Bukitima Hill even, maybe and Hill only. So just start now. <laughs> okay, are we doing last words? Let's do last oh, yeah, words. Okay. Oh, so maybe next week we can talk a little bit about. Okay, I'm not time sure. Time. Actually, I realized that um, we have been talking about the importance of having it. Do we want to talk about, um, just putting it on there, do we want to talk about what if you haven't started yet and then now you are like 30 plus 40, then how? You know right. what I mean? That's another topic also. So viewers, if you are listening and there's something that you want to talk about, then drop us a DM. Okay, last words. Who is going to go first? Chen me, 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 me. Me, oh, Dakaras, Dakaras, go. Start now. That's it. Okay, we have access to a lot of resources. The point is today, most of us have a lot of, have access to a lot of resources. Okay, but resources un, until they are utilized, left to idle, actually does nothing. Okay, if your seeds that you don't plant, you don't plant them now, there is expiry date. Mm. Okay, so plant plant the seeds. At least got time to nurture. Mm. Okay. 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 There's last words. Okay. Um all I can say is it takes time and if you do your math, you'll realize so you go and do your math, your employment income is not enough. Okay. Unless you Step and at least you play the survival game, you have alliances, you step somebody, you did it, you climb the ladder until the top top level. Okay, that takes a lot of energy and probably you can if you want to do that, but if you, if you want to play that game, seriously, you need a side game. Do something else on to supplement your income so that you have a special amount of money uh, in the future. At the same time, you also need something that you can rely on and not help ransom to your job. So it actually benefits in many ways. And eventually when the site grows, it will help you after you stop your full-time job, you have something else to do as well. And it's not like after you retire and then you don't know what to do with your life. So if you haven't started, just start. Do something about it. It's easier and easier now. If you wait, it will be even harder. Okay, those are been made last week. Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> okay, so because Rachel is the one that's typing on last week. Okay, mine, mine is quite simple. Start now. Oh, why am I blown on top gun? Just it. Since my last words, I must be clear. Okay. <laughs> last words, start now and start small. It doesn't matter even if it's just 10 cents a month. Just start now and start small. You can start very small. See, it's very small. That's what I want to say. Rachel, you see my summary. <laughs> Rachel, your turn. <laughs> very good. Okay, so for me, um, 
Well, suddenly mind blank. Eh. Hmm. Mind blank is the last word. Lah. <laughs> I can't admit it to you. Stop jumping from shit hole to shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my last words. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> so my last words is to be clear. Be clear on what you want out of your life and take back control. Clarity is power. There's power in clarity and it's important to be clear on what you want for your life. Yeah. Mm. Are you tapping out for me? I can tap out. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about me, I know. Oh, okay. okay. Just hey! You blank blank stare. I don't know what you're doing. No, because I'm looking at I'm looking at my phone. The uh, different comments that's coming in. You know, keep track. No, your our viewers many comments. You know? Let's respond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, so while uh, Rachel yeah. is typing her last yeah. words. <laughs> yes, it is true, Celeste. Because if you think about it, right, all the great successes we all start small. Start small, but nobody start big. Unless you got, you know, like certain like the Kardashian family, you are born into a rich family, that's a different story. But most successes you start small. So just start small and yeah. Better okay, than doing uh, better than wasting your life away. <laughs> we don't know whether they start small as well. Okay, I yeah, see, most lambs. Well, yeah. actually, even the condition they may have started small as well. They the just, very first they, gen, uh, yeah, the very first gen, but I'm talking about current gen. Current yeah, gen they yeah. have hit it big because of something, but it, they may have struggled mm -hmm. a lot before they hit it big. But actually, think, all, all of them started small. All, all the success no matter how many generations, generations ago. No, even Elon Musk, while well, he came from a family that is rich enough, but he started small as yeah, well. Yeah, so started small, that's what I mean. All successes yeah. start small. It's just just how many generations ago you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah okay cool today was a very very interesting topic i told you guys right interesting right that's why i forgot the music but i'll, I'll put music and never forget i will play it now join us again in two weeks time okay we'll see you guys in two weeks time if there's something else you want us to uh explore discuss more about what we talked about today for example um what if you are like 30 plus 40 etc you want to start now what should you do etc etc that kind of thing just drop us a comment or a dm and then we will look into it all right bye guys see you in two weeks time that's my music. <laughs>